Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. You all know my lovely wife, Hillary, but maybe what you didn't know is she is a certified master at raising turkeys. Gobble, gobble. Let's go in here and I'll show you. All you see is heads sticking up. These guys are five weeks old. It's time for them to go out. 31 turkey poults came in the mail, day old poults, and there are 31 turkeys in here still. Didn't lose a single one. I'm telling you, she's a master. We're gonna move the turkeys out today and there's quite a few steps to that job. Step one is to get the turkey arc out of the weeds. Now we'll go right out here to the chicken field and the turkey arc is right on your right hand side. The trailer jack has some issues. <laughs> oh, there's a snake, look. There, there goes a snake. A garter snake. Don't see him very often. He came right out of this hole. He was like, what you doing about He came out of here? Yes, he did. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the jack has some issues, but it's not worth fixing. We use this for about 12 weeks out of a year. And like I said, this trailer is nothing special. This is an old car hauling trailer that a neighbor gave me for free and we just built this structure on it with the roost because turkeys like to roost at night with a roof over it so they can get out of the rain when it's raining. Very simple. What am I ever going to do about that bush? It's terrible, isn't it? I think it looks nice. I do too. I think it looks nice. It's clematis and it's going to be blooming pretty soon. It's got nice buds on it all over the place. This is Premier One Electronet Poultry Fencing. Yep. And when you store this stuff, you always roll it up like this, or you'll have a heck of a time on back unrolling it. Like that. Fence around the turkey arc is complete and now the poultry field is full. We've got the layers with their fence down there and the broilers with their fence right there. It's time guys. You guys ready? These guys fly already. Thank <laughs> you. 
ride today. It's a very exciting day. Come on. I know, I'm sorry. There we go. Yo. They have spirit. I like that in a turkey. Is that five? That's five. You got war wounds, Hillary. I do. The nails are very sharp. Four more. You guys are going to a much better place. You're going to be happy out there. You'll have lots of happy chirps. Back out to the field. Ready? You want to do the gate yeah. for the door? When you can, I, these are difficult little buggers to pick up, but you want to grab them around their wings so they don't hurt their wings. Like this. There you go. They're making the, I found something cool, pips. Pip, pip. Turkeys are like a bunch of lawnmowers. They'll take the grass right down, eat it like crazy. Do you think it changes the flavor of the turkey? It sure does. We're gonna bring power to the turkey fence. The fence is still on, it really doesn't make much difference to me. Puts me in a better mood when I get shocked a few times by the ah, by the ah, by the ah. ah, I feel much better. This end of the electronet. You think they're happy to be out here? Listen to that. Electrifying the fence is really important, not only to keep predators out, but to keep the turkeys, where are they going? <laughs> to keep the turkeys from laying against the fence, because they'll do that and then a predator can grab them. So I don't know why they wanna always wanna lay against the fence, but electrifying keeps them away. And yes, the turkeys could fly over the fence if they wanted to, especially when they get older, but they don't because their mates are in here and their food and their water's in here and their place where they sleep, where they feel safe. So they don't fly over the fence, just like the chickens don't fly over the fence because of the same reasons. This is a Plasan gravity fed drinker, what we use for all of our poultry. All taken apart, these are all the pieces. These are elegant in their simplicity. You've got the bell here, which is the water holder or the water comes in this trough down here this thing that I just put it on is the weight and this is filled with fluid in here to provide weight then you've got the things that the water comes out of and this space down here is where the water flows into and that threads right down 
and snaps in like that. This is the valve assembly. You got this flexible rubber washer that sits on top of this thing. And this is what makes the seal when it tells it that it's full and it can stop flowing water. I'll show you. This is the spring that puts pressure on the valve. It goes right down there. This here is the top. This adjustment right here is how you adjust when the water opens and closes, how much pressure it is based on how far the bucket is above where your water is, how much head it has. And that screws on the top there. The way it works is this sits down over this and this little nozzle here is what where the water's coming from in the bucket. The tubes attached to this is the bucket up top here. And so as the bucket gets lighter, as the weight pulls it down because there's less water in it, it opens up here and can flow. When the bucket fills up, it makes a seal against this washer here and water stops flowing. So if you have one that's leaky, quite often all you have to do is kind of turn this a little bit and get the seat on a separate part of the washer or flip the washer over or clean the washer. Taking these apart and cleaning them is really important to keep them working properly. You can see when it, the water gets heavier, when this fills up down in here, this thing drops and that nozzle seals on the washer inside of here. Hi guys, you all coming to see me. For turkeys we always hang these with a wire because the turkeys will peck and pull at any kind of rope or string you use. That's a little bit too high. Then we got a bucket hanger under here. Hook the hose up to the drinker. And these two pieces of plywood obviously are to keep the turkeys from pooping in the water on both ends when they're roosting up here at night. These guys got so much to do out here. They gotta investigate everything. Hillary's going to get some grain for them. interested but we'll see mm, give him a little bit well, that guy was this is what we call poultry grower our local mill blends it it's corn and soybeans it's basically you need a carbohydrate source and a protein source most commonly it's corn for the carbohydrates and protein is soybeans mixed along with a mineral supplement that's got calcium and you know all the vitamins and minerals that they need Getting the right feed is really important for fast growing birds because they need a specific diet. We start them at, uh, as day old poults on 28% protein. Protein is really the thing you want to look most closely at for fast growing birds. So 28% for the first five weeks and then it drops down. This is the same stuff we feed to our broiler chickens uh, after they reach three weeks old till uh, butcher. And I forget the exact protein percentage, I'll put it on the screen. Speaking of feed, look what's coming down the road. Feed trucks here, feed trucks here. Good. Smells like molasses. He goes up on top of the tra truck and goes down from the top of the bin. The truck's got like 12 bins or something in it and he'll clean it out with a broom to make sure all the feed comes out of the bin that I'm taking from. This is poultry growers. So this is what we feed to the broilers after three weeks old, the broiler chickens. And this is what we're gonna start feeding to the turkeys today at five weeks old. That's it, three tons. 
Well, we're on the subject of feed and grain. Here's something I've believed since day one, and I think it's served us well on our farm, and that is the quality of the meat you get on an animal is directly related to the quality of food that the animal's eating. That may sound stupid, but think about it. We started out getting our feed from a local, local mill that was only one town over and fresh ground it. They shut down and Purina moved in and started selling the Purina pellet bag feed. And there was no way I was gonna feed that. So we went to the next most local mill, which is about 45 minutes away from us, Keystone. They got multiple locations. They have an animal nutritionist on staff. They, they're just super and the feed is top quality, fresh ground. That makes a huge difference. If you buy one of these national brands, you never know how long it's been sitting in the bag how much the nutritional quality is degraded. And I find this especially true when it comes to pigs. Because people feed pigs all kinds of garbage to try and save money feeding the pigs and the pork winds up being of not the quality you get when you feed it premium feed. When you feed your pigs premium feed of the appropriate protein level with the appropriate minerals in it. Same with cattle. If you graze your cattle on goldenrod and burdock and ragweed, it's going to taste gamey, but if you feed it on quality pasture, it's not going to taste gamey. It's going to have that, well, that kind of flavor that our beef has. And I've often wondered what gave us an edge sometimes in market, aside from the things that I did on purpose and indirectly. I think that's one of the things that we spend the extra money on good feed and it shows in the quality of our meat. That's my advice to you. Buy good feed for your animals. Fresh feed. Fresh feed is very important. Will she pull it? Of course she'll pull it. You didn't have any doubt in your mind, did you? The tractor's red. Boy, I feel like I've been coming through here a lot lately. along this fence line someplace I got a cause of a sagging fence it needs to be fixed right there it is let's see those are pretty flowers some kind of aster I think what happened here well that's not broken but something came through here here it is it's over in this corner where the fence wire broke. There. This fencing knot I learned in wire is so nice. When fences break, they usually pull loose at the crimps that I used to use, but the wire knot holds much, much better and doesn't cost me anything. If you're saying to yourself, man, he really needs to trim under his fences, I would say you're correct. The problem I ran into is my H, the hydraulic pump is failing on it, and I'm not sure why. The front seal's leaking, but I think there's something else going on. That's my sickle bar tractor that I mow under fences with. Now, I could use the MD to sickle bar mow, and I have, but the MD, the clutch is really stiff, and the steering is so much harder than the H, it just makes it a real chore. I can mow with the Super C, too. I have a separate sickle mower, especially for my Super C. But I think I'd rather and just wait and get the H going. I found that weeds growing on the fence really make a quite a small impact on voltage loss across the fence. It's more dead shorts, metal to metal, metal to metal to ground that reduce voltage. But it does need to be done sometime or another. <sighs> you guys were yelling at me. calves ran through the fence here I gotta fix that too right here pesky calves you guys are terrible I just got to get this fixed next job is to move this temporary fence over a little bit into the mode area so that the cattle can get at all this tall stuff that's left
think Patty's going to have a heart attack down there. It'll come soon enough. Okie doke, let's head down here and we'll call them up. They're all ollie gagging down by the woods. Come on, cows! Come on, cows! Come on, cows! My gosh, the way that you were yelling at me, I'd think you'd come running at full charge. Come on, cows! I gotta take him around the corner. Come on, Patty. Come on, cows. Come on, you guys. You know where we're going. They found it. An Orton. <laughs> Oh, we got a confused calf, as usual. Horton knows that Titus is right down there in the barn. I know, Horton. Oh, well, that last calf figured it out. My gosh. Yeah. You need a drink? The year of awesome pasture continues on just a few acres farm. He's still going at it over there. What do you think about that little one? I thought so too. What these guys are leading up to is our annual bull competition. You know when the herd all comes back together after breeding season, Titus and Orton reunite and they gotta figure out who's the boss for the next year. That'll happen in about three weeks. But it's time for me to head back in and take care of afternoon chores. Turkeys are all hanging out underneath the ark, laying down. Chickens are in the shade too under the eggmobile. Titus here in the barn knows too. He's digging a hole there and throwing it right into the water trough. Even when we're inside the house, Hillary and I can hear it night and day. These guys going back and forth. Breeding, breeding season gets old. We're always ready for it to end and for the herd to come back together. Why can't male ants sink? Why can't they sink? Because they're boy ant. Boy ant. Boy. What the heck is wrong with me? Awful jokes, ladies. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? Never once have I heard any of you ladies laugh at my jokes. You know, that hurts my feelings. When I come and I feed you twice a day, I use your hay, make it all nice, but you don't laugh at my jokes. You 
you guys never laugh at my jokes either. I get two hay every day. Maybe Titus is mad about him. I don't know. Little monster's dish got buried in the mud. This is unusual. Usually they're on me right when I come through the fence knocking at the bucket and things. They must be busy. Where you guys been? Come and get something to eat. Well, you don't seem that hungry. Mm -hmm. Ow, that hurts a little bit. I'm friend, not food. I have three things to end this video. Number one is we have new merchandise at our store. And to find the store, you just go down in the video description. The link is right in the top of the video description. The name of the company is Farm Focus. They're a great company in Nebraska that they actually print the shirts and things right in Nebraska. The first is Patty's head on a cap that says, come on cows. That is Patty. I sent a photograph and they turned it into a hat. Second is a shirt I've been wearing all this episode, which is actually our Farm All MD. Again, I took a photo, I sent it to them and they turned it into this graphic. Just a few acres farm pasture raised meat and eggs with our MD on it. And the second shirt is another come on cows piece with Patty's head on it. So head to the online store if you're interested in any of that stuff. I know I don't talk about our merchandise much, but it's always there, it's right online. The second thing I wanted to mention is that I'll be in Rantoul, Illinois uh, this coming week, the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th of August, which is a Thursday, a Friday, and a Saturday. I'll be there with my kids, Gray and Henry, at the Half Century of Progress show. I don't have a booth there. I'll just be wandering around like everybody else, and it is a giant show. I don't have a golf cart, unfortunately. I called too late to get one, so we're going to be huffing at me and the kids. I think what I'll do is when I get there and I scope the location out, I'll find a good place to have meetups. And I'll put that in the video comments here. I'll pin a comment on the top so people can come back and see it after we get to the show on Thursday. And I'll also put it in the community tab. If you go to our channel and if you go to our channel's homepage and you go across to the community tab, it's kind of like Facebook or Instagram. You can put posts up there. I'll put a post that says where we're going to be. And I'll probably do a meetup for a couple hours a day, like 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. or something at a given location if you want to come and meet me out there. That also means I won't be at the Ithaca Farmers Market this coming Saturday, August 26th, because I'll be in Illinois and Hillary won't be there either. We won't have anything for sale at the Ithaca Market. The last thing I wanted to mention is the channel has been growing by leaps and bounds, and I'm really thankful to all of you for watching the videos and to all the new viewers that have found the channel. Last time I looked, the channel's averaging a half million views every 48 hours. It's mind boggling. You just can't even wrap your head around it. So I thank you all very much for watching the videos. It's been a great journey. I hope you have a great day. I'm so looking forward to going to Rad Tool. I've been thinking the kids are excited. I just had to get that out there. We can't wait to get going. We're gonna leave in the middle of the night and drive there and We'll be at the show on Thursday morning. I hope to see you there. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.